So looking for a cure for metastatic melanoma, is there really a cure on the horizon? I spoke about several things in the field of melanoma. First of all, where are we now? We now have a five-year overall survival, the highest landmark of 52% of patients surviving five years when treated with combination CTLA-4 and anti-PD-1 checkpoint inhibitor immunotherapy from clinical trials. So where do we go next with that? So clearly we need to improve the overall survival. We've come a long way in a decade. Uh, we have targeted therapies and we know that the five-year overall survival for targeted therapies is uh, around 35%. So where do we go from here? One trap that we've fallen into is this concept that we can make tumors hot. And if we could only make tumors hot, they'll respond to checkpoint inhibitors, immunotherapy particularly, and therefore we can improve overall survival. We now have two randomized control trials in metastatic stage four melanoma, which has shown that that concept, that simple concept does not always translate into an improvement in both the progression-free survival and overall survival. I think the two best examples are the trial of pembrolizumab PD-1 combined with epicatastat and IDO inhibitor. The thinking there that the IDO uh, enzyme in the microenvironment would increase the CD8 T cells and therefore make a tumor hot and therefore more active with the checkpoint inhibitor. That was a spectacularly negative trial. And then more recently, the second negative trial was the TVEC uh, a trial, keynote trial of TVEC combined with pembrolizumab versus pembrolizumab combined with a placebo intralesional treatment. And that was negative. We don't have the details of that trial, but that was negative. Again, uh, relying on that concept of making cold tumors hot. So where we're heading is basically unscrambling that concept of what makes a tumor hot in a mechanistic sense. And the only way that we can really do that well is using translational research and tissue, melanoma tissue collected from patients treated with these drug therapies. So we can understand resistance better, understand what it takes to actually induce a response or what is there that's preventing a response. Um, which brought me to the last part of my talk, which is talking about the neoadjuvant platform, which is a wonderful platform for many reasons. Number one, patients like it. We can prognosticate more accurately after we've treated with drug therapy and then resect melanoma. And number two, it is a fantastic drug development platform. We can cut the phase 1B, phase 2 trials from two years down to six months with small uh, numbers of patients on a neoadjuvant platform. And number three, we collect a lot of resistant tissue for those who don't respond to the drug therapy in the neoadjuvant phase, which we can then work on and focus our research to understand resistance. The other thing is we're getting better at selecting patients for treatments. We are now uh, creating predictive scores to predict how well a patient will respond to a therapy so that we can then um, enrich our clinical trials with patients who are unlikely to respond to our uh, standard therapies so that we can quickly get answers on how to help those patients uh, more effectively and more efficiently. So that was what my keynote uh, lecture covered. Uh, and it's about moving forward and understanding mechanisms in a detailed way so that we can therapeutically manipulate them to help our patients with melanoma. However, even more important than drug therapy is prevention. And we cannot forget the prevention method message with melanoma. And that is UV exposure, uh, causes the vast majority of cutaneous melanomas.